This is 10 News at 11, working for you. Now at 11, a blistering heat wave across most of the U.S. We're working for you on what your zone can expect and the programs being offered to help beat the heat. Shocking testimony in the murder of a police officer. When he went like this to do the motion for when he said it, I could see the blood all over his hands. How loved ones describe the moments after the crime. As the war in Ukraine continues, the Ukrainian First Lady made a desperate plea to Congress today, what she asked for to help her country defend themselves from the Russian invasion. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 11. I'm Rachel Lucas. John and Brittany have the night off. Well, it is no secret that today was hot. The problem is it's only going to get even warmer as the week goes by. Let's get straight to your forecast tonight. Meteorologist Marshall Downing joins us now. And Marshall, you are anticipating these temperatures hotter tomorrow? Yep, hotter tomorrow and even Ooh, hotter okay. this weekend. We're pushing 100. I don't think we're going to quite get here in Roanoke, but wouldn't be surprised if one or two places does actually reach that by Sunday. As far as right now goes, our temperatures have eased off a little bit from their highs in the 90s this afternoon. We did have some 80s further towards the west, but now with Phil's at 71, Roanoke's at 82, and South Boston at 82. So it feels more comfortable. It's not quite as bad outside as it was earlier on. Meanwhile, there's plenty of heat down towards the southwest. Dallas is at 99 degrees still. All that heat still has to make its way towards us. The wind in Virginia is coming in from the southwest. That means that heat is headed our direction. Now, some good news. We haven't had too much in terms of showers. We've had a little bit make their way through Patrick Henry and into Pennsylvania counties, but that was real quick and moved really lightly. We've been pretty clear, too, and there's not a whole lot of rainfall overnight. I think around 4 o'clock we're going to get some rain, but then we stay dry until tomorrow afternoon with our next storm chance. Now the good news is our heat and storm chances don't really overlap, and even tomorrow the storm chance is pretty low, but I'll still take you through it, tell you what risks we've got just a little bit later in the hour. Back to you, Rachel. Thank you, Marshall, and we are in the midst of a heat wave and looking at the forecast, as Marshall said, there seems to be no relief in sight, which is why 10 News reporter Sydney Jacksheimer is working for you tonight to share tips on how to stay safe in the heat and the warning signs for heat related illnesses. Temperatures reach the 90s today for most of the region, and it's just the beginning of this week's heat wave, which is why health professionals like Dr. Tara Stone with Lewis Gale is encouraging people to stay cool and hydrated. Of course, hydration is big, and then um, staying in the shade or wearing very light clothing, not a lot of layers. If you start to sweat excessively, feel dizzy, or get a headache, that can be a sign of heat exhaustion. Whereas a heat stroke is much more serious and calls for emergency attention, according to Brian Klingenpeel with Roanoke County Fire and Rescue. Heat stroke involves not sweating. That's one of the key differences is the not sweating. Also going to be dizzy, but there's going to be confusion and possibly loss of consciousness uh, with the heat stroke. If any of those things happen, then that's an immediate call to 911. Along with protecting your health, there are also ways to protect your wallet during this heat wave. Appalachian Power spokesperson George Porter shared ways to avoid overloading your area's electrical grid. Energy efficient is the best way to say it. Um, obviously, during daytime, these are peak hours, 8 to 5. Our peak hours are even more peak hours now that majority of us are still working from home. Uh, that's changed. So, you know, whenever you can, whenever you can run uh, washing machines and dishwashers later in the evening, early in the morning, that does help. Uh, with individual load. The heat is expected to subside after the weekend. Until then, stay safe and hydrated. In Roanoke, Sydney Jacksheimer 10 News, working for you. And it's not just us. About a third of Americans are under heat alerts with oppressive temperatures here at least through the weekend. The Southern Plains are still the hardest hit, as you see there in the map, with nearly a dozen record highs in Texas and Oklahoma on Tuesday. There's also the threat of wildfires, with some states battling multiple blazes. As the heat spreads to the Northeast, President Biden was in Massachusetts today to announce new executive actions on climate change after Congress failed to act. Climate change is literally an existential threat to our nation and to the world. In the coming days, my administration will announce the executive actions we have developed to combat this emergency. 
We need to act. The president has also announced plans to add funding for low income families facing high energy bills. Temperatures will hit 100 degrees this weekend in parts of southwest Virginia. And if you need somewhere to cool off, the Salvation Army of Danville is here to help. They're extending their lunchtime hours this week. The building will be open until 2 p.m. tomorrow and then again Friday for people to cool off. Then on Sunday, they're opening their doors and offering ice cold lemonade, snow cones, popsicles and ice cream. We want to definitely open up the facilities to just for them to catch a breather, get some more cool refreshments before because the next few days it's going to be extremely hot. Lunch will be served through Friday and on Sunday too. Another opportunity to beat the heat is coming from the Central Virginia Alliance for Community. CVALC is offering a fan or window air conditioning unit while supplies last. To apply, you must be 60 years or older, live in Lynchburg, Amherst, Campbell, Bedford, or Appomattox County, and have an income below $1,700 a month for single household or below $2,300 a month for a two-person household. To apply, visit CVALC.org. We've got a link on our website as well. And for the first time, we're hearing from family members of the son of a retired assistant police chief in Buena Vista accused of murdering his father. 35 year old Jonathan Patterson had a preliminary hearing this morning in court. Patterson's girlfriend, Christian Offsetter, gave her testimony of what happened in February, the day the retired police chief was killed. She says Patterson left the house around 715 in the morning to get a post hole digger from his dad, known as Jay. You just saw a photo of him. Offsetter said Patterson told her to stay to say he was with her the morning of the alleged incident when she called him. Offsetter began to question why and she was shocked when she saw blood on his hands when he returned to the house. When he went like this to do the motion for when he said it, I could see the blood all over his hands. It covered his hands and it was on the cuffs of his sleeves. According to the medical examiner's office, Philip J. Patterson died from a sharp force injury to the head, neck and chest. Police say they found J. Patterson's body inside his home that was reported on fire. A Vinton man will spend the next 50 years in prison for killing two people in Roanoke back in 2020. William Ray was sentenced yesterday after a jury found him guilty for the murder of April Barnacote and Eric Surface. You may remember they were found dead in a home on Queen Anne Drive. Police say Ray knew both the victims. Roanoke businesses need employees. That's why a new program is aiming to help people get a job. Star City Works, which launched today, hopes to fill gaps in the local labor industry. Job seekers can get financial help to attend various trainings or even go back to school. Members of the Workforce Development Board say they wanted a program specific to this area. All of our employers, especially in the city of Roanoke, are hurting for employees. And so we think that by helping some of these and providing some of these other wraparound services will help folks kind of realize and get out of the hole and back to work and just help them with that sustainability. The program was created through funding from the American Rescue Plan. Mortgage demands have hit its lowest level since the year 2000 as high interest rates and inflation continue to impact home buyers. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, applications for a mortgage to purchase a home dropped 7% for the week and were 19% lower than the same week in 2021. While buyers have been contending with high prices all year, rates are now almost double what they were in January. Ivana Trump, the first wife of former President Donald Trump, was mourned today in New York. Trump and their three children together, Don Jr., Ivanka, and Eric, along with their families, gathered at St. Vincent's Roman Catholic Church for a celebration of life service. Ivana and the former president divorced in 1992. She died after being found unconscious at her Manhattan apartment last week. The medical examiner ruled her death an accident, saying she died from blunt impact injuries to her torso. She was 73 years old. As the war in Ukraine rages on, the country's first lady made an emotional plea to the U.S. Congress today asking for more help. Olena Zelensky is in Washington this week hoping to secure more weapons and funding to help Ukraine fight Russia. 
The first lady's trip comes as Russia is making plans to annex more territory in Ukraine. And in just the last week, Russian troops launched deadly weapons on several Ukrainian cities. But as the atrocities continue in the war ravaged nation, Ukrainian leaders can only hope more help is on the way. I'm asking for weapons, weapons that would not be used to wage a war on somebody else's land, but to protect one's home and the right to wake up alive in that home. The U.S. has already sent weapons and equipment to Ukraine, including multiple launch rocket systems and artillery ammunition. A victory for one family's legacy, the decade-long fight to return a portion of the California coast to the rightful owners. Plasma donations are always needed, and these officers are answering the call. Coming up, we're going to tell you how this blood drive is building bonds here in the community. The heirs of Charles and Willa Bruce have finally received their family's land back after nearly a hundred years. Their stretch of Southern California beachfront property was known as Bruce's Beach, and it was a resort for black families. But in 1924, the city of Manhattan Beach took it away from them through eminent domain and paid the family a fraction of the cost. After a two-year effort, Los Angeles County voted last month to return the property to the Bruce family. During a ceremony Wednesday to give the deed back, the family said this was a step toward righting a wrong. The people of California of all walks of life have unanimous, unanimously spoken. And have said that racism and bias and patriarchy and misogyny and legal cover-ups will no longer be tolerated in our state. As part of the agreement, Los Angeles County will rent it from the family under a 24 month lease totaling $413,000 per year. 
Campbell County leaders need your help honoring a local hero, and they're asking you to keep it a surprise. They'd like people to write cards and letters to a veteran who fought in the Battle of the Bulge during World War II. We're told he was seriously injured and awarded a Purple Heart, but was never publicly recognized because he was hospitalized. He has some health and mobility issues, and so it would not be in his best interest to actually come out to a big public ceremony. So we thought, let's take it to him, and we thought letters would be the perfect way to show love and appreciation. It's a great idea, and he certainly deserves it. If you want to write him a letter, you can drop them off to the Department of Public and Employee Relations office, or you can mail them to the address on your screen. It's P.O. Box 100 in Rustburg. 24588. We'll also have this online. You're asked to send them in by August 5th. Serving others looked a little different this afternoon for those who wear the badge. Several gathered at the Jamerson Family YMCA for a Battle of the Badges Blood Drive. It was hosted by the John Lynch Lodge 34 Fraternal Order of Police, who supports and teaches others about law enforcement. Officers even took turns relieving each other so they could donate. The FOP also raffled off 35 sets of Lynchburg Hillcat tickets for the first responders night ball game and fireworks show at the end of the month. Great job. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Good evening, everyone. We've stayed fairly dry for a lot of the day. Only a few showers here and there. Through the rest of tonight, we're going to largely stay dry until we get to about 4 a.m. At that point, we've got some heavy rainfall making its way into the New River Valley. Other than that, light showers in the Highlands, some around Roanoke. Most of the rain itself is going to stay down to North Carolina. And by about 5 o'clock, we're really done with that. We don't have much showers by 7 a.m. So by the time you actually have to get going and doing things on Thursday, we stay fairly dry. Once 1 p.m. rolls around, there are a couple light showers in the south. That's starting to form what would eventually turn into storms, but we just don't have a whole lot of energy to fuel those. So as these showers make their way a little further east, they'll develop into some storms. I think Appomattox, Charlotte, Campbell County, so that Lynchburg south side crossover area. We'll get some storms at 4 or 5 p.m. And then after 5, the showers really die out and we stay pretty dry. By 10 p.m., we're hardly even looking at cloud cover. The Storm Prediction Center has us in the level to one marginal risk for south side into parts of the Lynchburg area. But again, the storm chance is really low for us tomorrow. And rain accumulation isn't going to be too impressive either. Some places, Roanoke, Smith Mountain Lake, going to get a few tenths of an inch. We might get towards a half inch in Lynchburg. I think it's going to stay a little bit less than that myself. But either way, the rain totals are not exactly impressive. Most of our temperatures now are in the 70s and 80s, like Hillsville at 73, Roanoke at 82. But we're going to have plenty of heat to take our temperatures into the 90s across most of the area for tomorrow. And then we'll see mid 90s consistently on Friday and upper 90s Saturday and Sunday. New River Valley is the one spot that's going to stay a little bit on the cooler side for our zone high temperatures. In the highlands, we'll get into the low 90s and then mid 90s for Roanoke, Lynchburg, and in Southside. Now, we're not quite quite in the level of a heat advisory because that's more for when the heat index is going to get up towards between 105 and 109. If we were in an excessive heat watch, that means we would be getting heat indices of 110 or higher. We're not going to be humid enough to quite get that heat index. So even though a large portion of the country is in a heat alert, we don't quite have that. Now, remaining overnight, it's not quite the same as the warnings that we had during the day, but I would expect more advisories and warnings tomorrow. Closer to home, there are advisories on the eastern side of Virginia and North Carolina, but we stay out of that for right now. Most of our temperatures will slide into the 70s overnight. That's not a lot cooler, which means we have a lot of heat to work with to start tomorrow. Pulaski's at 71 for the low, Alta Vista 75. And then on Thursday, temperatures warm up quite noticeably. Pulaski at 86, Roanoke at 94, Danville at 96, and we hold on to those mid 90s for Friday. Rocky Mountain at 93 and Roanoke at 95. Most of our temperatures get into the upper 90s for Saturday and Sunday, but we do stay fairly dry. I don't think we've got showers again until the end of the week start of next week. It's really Monday and Tuesday that we've got more significant cloud cover and rainfall and temperatures are going to cool a little bit once that rain gets here. Back to you, Rachel. All right. Thank you, Marshall.
So cheesy cocktail names are a given, but what if we told you that there was a cheesy drink to top them all? That's right, coming up, we're gonna tell you more on the mixed drink that is unapologetically cheesy. Jack two, test two, three, four, I'm a dog fish. All right, here's a wild one for you. It is the cheesiest, but maybe not the dreamiest drink around. Just take a look at this concoction. You're looking at the Veltini. So it's a take on the classic martini made with Velveeta infused vodka. And yes, apparently there is such a thing. It's then mixed with olive brine and vermouth. Garnishes include Velveeta stuffed olives and jumbo shells. You can get this drink at select BLT steakhouses for 15 bucks. Velveeta is also selling a limited number of kits so you can make them at home. I know that's exactly what you wanted to do, Abby. Is it available in provolone? <laughs> Just wondering, because you know, that's mm. the direction I'm leaning. I don't know. You never thought like about that. nachos and yeah. martinis. Maybe some monaster. Prov yeah, yeah. Provolone would. I, okay. I like where your mind's going. Yeah, it's deteriorating quickly. All <laughs> right, the Tour de France winding down with a new champion a couple stages away from a title, and we're breaking down the Atlantic division of the ACC as the kickoff is underway in Charlotte. Sports is next.
And now, the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. All right, it's time. The ACC kickoff underway in Charlotte. Today, the Atlantic Division met the media, and our own 10 Sports' Eric Johnson is there. The roar of the Clemson Tigers has been loud in recent years, having won six straight ACC titles. However, that changed last year when Wake Forest burst on the scene, wreaking havoc in what was in historic 2021 campaign. Our theme for this year is, is mindset, and every year we come to these media days and people have low expectations of us, and we never let that dictate how we went about our, our weekly process or our preparation. The Demon Deacons turned in an 11-3 record, earning their second Atlantic Division title in program history, along with a Gator Bowl win. They tout 21 returning starters, including Sam Hartman at quarterback. One of our biggest pushes is can we be consistent, but can we also be make a stride? You know, preseason rankings, whatever. Hope they rank us 12th, hope they rank us 13th, 14th, 15th. Maybe they don't put us on there. Um, that'd be nice because that's where we live. Wake will be well acquainted with the Commonwealth with the likes of VMI and Liberty on its schedule. So you schedule these non-conference games so far in advance that you, you really don't know what you're going to get when the game gets there. Uh, VMI was a playoff team. Liberty's had great success. As for Clemson, it's hoping to get back to his glory days with DJ Uyunglele having more experience under his belt. He's got some scars on him and some shrapnel and, and some wounds. That's going to serve him well as he goes into this year. It's a game of performance, and we can't change that. Uh, I can talk about how great he is all day long. you got to go do it. I want to get some weight down and be able to come into this year in the best shape of my life, uh, just be able to just so I can put my best foot forward. The Demon Deacons and Tigers will face off in Winston-Salem on September the 24th. At ACC kickoff in Charlotte, Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. Thank you, Eric. More college football. The CIAA is in town. Last night, the 12 member schools, football coaches, and staff held that free youth clinic at Salem Stadium. That ahead of Media Day activities today. Bowie State has won three straight titles in this league, but everyone hoping this season returns to something closer to normal after a trying couple of COVID years. Well, us not being able to start camp just right away and being technically out of football for a few years because of COVID, we're still interested to see how our guys are going to respond this summer because it's a little different this year where we have a seven-day grace period where we'll report to camp early and we can lift and condition for seven days and then we'll get into the true football aspects of it. So we're excited, but we're also a little, little nervous about what it's going to look like. All righty, we've got stage 17 of the Tour de Carlin, otherwise known as the Tour de France. Another bout with the Pyrenees, four major climbs and a mountain finish. Now, Brandon McNulty out of the United States, Jonas Vinegard of Denmark, and today, Bogatia. He's a Slovenian rider and the two-time defending champ. They led the way. This time, though, it's Pagaccia right here edging Vinegard for the Stage 17 win. But Vinegard still holds the overall lead by 2 minutes, 18 seconds. And John Carlin's favorite rider, Geraint Thomas, the 2018 champ, is 4 minutes and 56 seconds behind. So I don't think he's going to win. News and notes for you. The 49ers starter Jimmy G has been given permission to seek a trade 33 and 14 as a starter. Now, the River Turtles and Otterbots finish 6 6 after 9, but they play a sudden death in the Appy League. You either score or you hold them. And Connor Dykstra played a Jevin, Jevin Yellow, Relliford in sudden death. And the bots get the victory. And Swedish golfer Enrik Stenson moves to the Live Golf Tour. So he is promptly removed from his Ryder Cup captaincy for 2023. Here comes your light of the night. Oh, the Heinz sign oh. being removed Ooh. from what we used to know as Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Ooh. It's now Acrisure. Stadium. Oh, I'm not a Steelers fan, but I am a Pennsylvania native, and this is a tough one. That is a tough it just, one. I don't think I'm time. going to be able to say that for a long time. So I'm, yeah. I'll be like, uh, the game's in Pittsburgh <laughs> at some stadium. The former Heinz Stadium. The former Heinz Field. <laughs> there you have it. Now back to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Happy. And thank you for watching 10 News at 11. The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon is next.